Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and welcome the director of the Gannick Apple Awards, Ms. Amada Anderson. such a great city. Um, one of the greatest glories of the city is, is the world, is right here. You name it, you will find it. Language, religion, cuisine, music, culture. You want to see the world, come to New York. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to open our show tonight by inviting all of you to come home to New York. Did we get off at the wrong train station? Jeez, <laughs> no. it's like we're not even in America. Oh, you are in America. This is New York, the gateway to America. Oh, who are you? I am a New York City tourist guy. My profession is to show people around, make them feel comfortable, and make them feel like home. Amazing. I didn't know that was a thing. It is. No matter where you're from, what you believe in, whatever food you like, there is always a slice of home in New York. So. Come on, come on, to New York. Oh, oh! Oh! Wow! Yes. Oh! Oh, wow! <laughs> Having a license to tourists made all the difference in the world. The city really did a lot of things to him, and it wasn't so overwhelming. And it was beautiful. More beautiful. The licensed tourist guide. We have tourist guides that can speak your language. In Sicily, the Nega with the Elm of Victor Henry Hudson. In Sicily, the Nega with the Arne Doctor Peter Minwi. The Danish Museum has been built in the year 1903 and has been the 
Come home to New York. 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 I will never travel without a guide again. New York has opened my eyes and changed how I see the world. But there is no way that could have happened without our guide. I would follow him anywhere. <laughs> And now it is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce our producer of the Gannon Capital Awards, Miss Adrian Cooper! <laughs> so much for getting those heels on. <laughs> uh, hello everyone and welcome to the third annual Gannon Apple Awards. Uh, it is with great pleasure that uh, we're here with you this evening. Um, I've been a part of this committee since the beginning, but the last couple of years I've been in charge of the whole thing. And this year, I'm so fortunate to be able to be presenting to you our host for the evening, who is not only an amazing, talented superstar, in this great city and in the world of show business, but also a dear, dear friend. Uh, Mark Nadler has been, um, <laughs> he's been nominated uh, recently as well for the Manhattan Association of Cabaret Awards. Um, and he's also won uh, three years in a row for Outstanding Musical Comedy Performer. He's been nominated for a Drama Desk Award by the, uh, the Broadway World Award and is the winner of the 2015 World Editor's Choice Award for Entertainer of the Year. He's performed all over this great city and I'm not even gonna begin to list the names of the places because we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm just so delighted to have him here because uh, I trust him with almost anything, and certainly with this show. So without further ado, please welcome Mark Nadler. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Apple Awards, presented by the guides and Administration Guides Association of New York City. Do you still trust me? Yeah. <laughs> Gannick. Gannick. That's so exciting. <laughs> Tonight it's a little more Gannick, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Come homo to New York. I thought that's what I was doing here, honestly. I mean, really, I thought that's what they asked me. But, um, it's fine. I'm happy to do this. I'm delighted to do this, as a matter of fact. I think it's a great thrill to be here, um, let me just say right off the top that I have here the envelopes. <laughs> with the winners in them. There will be no announcing Justin Ferrate when the real winner is Lee Gelber. We're not gonna have that tonight. We're not gonna have that. La La Land wins nothing. I'm saying it up front. Nothing! And listen, La La Land shouldn't win anything. I lived in L.A. for four years, if you want to call that living. I know all about it. That town deserves nothing. I call it my lost years like Jesus wandering through the desert. It's a horrible place. I spent four years just trying to get back to New York. I, it, it, when I first moved to Los Angeles, um, I told a friend of mine that I was moving to Los Angeles. <laughs> and she said to me, look, when it's 112 degrees in New York City, it'll be 80 in Los Angeles. When it's 40 below in New York City, it'll be 80 in Los Angeles. <laughs> there are 10 million fascinating people in New York City. There are 80 in Los Angeles. <laughs> I have to tell you, right up front, I have to let you know, um, I, I know you're, you're looking at me and and you're thinking, <laughs> my goodness, he's sophisticated. <laughs> that is a, that's a, that's a New Yorker thing there. That's a cosmopolitan guy. I know you're, I can hear you thinking this. I can see you thinking this. 
the truth is I um, was not born and or raised in New York City. How many of you actually were born and or raised in New York City? Oh, wow, lots of you. Oh, that's really rare, like at least 30%, because usually most people, well, I wasn't. I come from, uh, originally I come from, and I don't admit this to everyone. I have, I have to tell you that since Adrian's a friend, I feel like I can just open up immediately. I come from Waterloo, Iowa. <laughs> Obviously a bunch of people who have never been there. Iowa, Iowa is our nation's pork state. Uh, for every human being in Iowa, somebody who likes pork, so it's good to know. Some, uh, 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 for every human being in Iowa, there are 4.3 pigs. This is something that tour guides in Iowa have to know. 4.3 pigs for every human being, and I'm Jewish, and that's really all I want to say about it. It was so horrible. And so when I was 17, it was a very good year. When I, when I was 17, I came to New York City for the first time. I came here for a week, and then I, I moved here. I, I, I couldn't wait. I, I couldn't wait to, to be here. And this is why I'm telling you this, because I want you to know how important it is what you do. If I had had a guide show me around the city, I wouldn't have made one of the most embarrassing mistakes that I've ever made in my entire life to this day. When I moved to New York, there was this um, commercial on television. Come back to Jamaica. What's old is what's new. And I thought, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And it was February, and I found out that you can get to Jamaica on the 7 train <laughs> for just 60 cents at the time. So I put, I swear to God, this is completely true. I put my suntan oil and my, my swimsuit. I got on the train. I, two hours it took to get there. I finally get out. I look around. I thought, boy, man, talk about no truth in advertising. This is, this is if I had had a guide, I would have known. This is how important you people are. You're very, very important people. Save a boy from humiliation is what you could do. Too late, you didn't. But, um, but I'll tell you what. Shall we begin this? Shall we let the games begin? Are you ready? Yeah. But before I start, I'm going to do this all night, by the way. I'm going to say that I'm going to do something, and then I'll realize something else is going to happen, and then I'll do that, because deep down inside I have what's called cabaret Tourette syndrome, so things will come out that I didn't plan in advance, I apologize. Anyway, how about that cocktail hour? Was that amazing? The food? The Moscow Mules in honor of our new president? Wasn't that fantastic? Adrian Cooper put that cocktail hour together. Shouldn't you give her a round of applause? That was amazing. It was so gorgeous. Oh, I'm so happy. But now I have to work. Okay, here we go. Our first award. Wait, look at this. Do you know how it's... And may I say... May I say... This black tie recommended thing at this party, black tie, what is it? Black tie encouraged. Yeah. Many of you look so good. <laughs> Any tie would have been fine. <laughs> Any tie, pork man, would have been fine. <laughs> anyway. So, so, I know that this, I have this mic, and I'm sure it works fine. See, if I use it like this, you can hear me, right? Yeah. But I'm going to use this one, because I'm a homosexual. <laughs> and this just makes me feel a little more Beyonce, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Our first award is for outstanding achievement. Have I told you too much about myself so early in the day? 
If so, I apologize. I'll be straight by the end of the evening. Because God knows I'm not getting any here. Okay, our first award is for Outstanding Achievement in Support of NYC Preservation. That's, that's important. <laughs> to present the award, she is the president of the Art Deco Society of New York. He is the director of park services for the High Line. Please welcome Roberta Newsom and Tim Reese. <laughs> Thank you. It was an honor to accept on behalf of Friends of the High Line. <laughs> Tonight's nominees all have one thing in common. They care deeply about one aspect of the city's cultural infrastructure and have devoted themselves to preserving it in the face of new change. From animals to folklore to the harbor to the neighborhoods, all of the missions are valuable and focus on irreplaceable aspects of our history and our legacy. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Preservation are the Executive Director of the Historic Districts Council, Simeon Bankoff. For the Bronx Zoo, the New York Wildlife Conservation Society. Founding Director of City Lore, Steve Zeitlin. And the Granite Apple Award goes to... Simeon Bankoff. touched. I, I probably should have, I was telling everyone I was going to go research Susan Lucci's um, <laughs> speeches, but I missed on that one. Um, New York City is incredibly important. I'm very thrilled to be honored by Gannick for this. Um, what you all do to introduce visitors to the city, and in fact residents to the city, um, is extraordinarily important. I believe very strongly that the best way to understand history is to physically encounter it. Uh, which is why I do what I do and why I get up every morning and work with a terrific staff and a uh, usually dealable with board of directors, um, <laughs> all of whom are extraordinarily devoted and extraordinary people. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I started when I was about four years old, so that would now make me about 20. Um, and I, I've been lucky enough to be supported by an amazing group of people, uh, mostly my wife, Avina Allen, who's here. And pretty much everyone I know is because of preservation and because of New York City. So thank you all. Thank you, Gannick. Um, this is amazing and wonderful. Thank you. That was so exciting. <laughs> thank you for preserving. <laughs> Next up, we have the award for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City. And then it says in parenthesis here, parenthesis here, it says culture. <laughs> <laughs> Yogurt makers. <laughs> she is the Bistro Award winning star. Oh, she's fantastic. No, I actually know this person. This woman can sing like, she's got a voice like an angel. She looks like Grace Kelly. She's everybody 
that I've ever wanted to be. She's really incredible. <laughs> she is the Bistro Award winning star of In the Still of the Night, which was a show that she did at the Songs of Cole Porter, who loved New York. He is a two-time Broadway World Award winning actor. He's fantastic too. I, we were changing down in the bathroom together. He's, <laughs> he's, he's very, very handsome. Uh, and he is currently appearing in Cagney, so will you please welcome Shayna Farr and Bruce Sabbath. When you experience a city, you are experienced in its culture, right? Whether it's high culture, or low culture, artistic culture, or corporate culture, right? Yeah. <laughs> Agriculture, <laughs> water culture, counterculture, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And tonight's nominees embrace such different, diverse aspects of New York City's culture as an island park a pair of world-famous concert venues, and the subway system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although when you think about it, the, the concert venues and the subway system aren't really that different. I mean, have you seen the amazing musical performers you know, that they have on the subway platforms these days? Oh, that's true, yeah. and the prices, the tickets are so reasonable. That's true, <laughs> and you don't have to pay those annoying convenience fees. So. <laughs> Uh, right, the nominees <laughs> for the Outstanding Achievement Award in Support of New York City Culture are the Music Director of the New York Philharmonic, Alan Gilbert, <laughs> the former President and CEO of the Trust for Governors Island, Leslie Koch, the Tour Director of the Apollo Theater, Billy Mitchell, and staff attorney and chief spokesman of the Strap Hangers campaign for NYPIRG, Gene Rushinoff. Yeah. And the gamut goes to Leslie Koch. Yeah. Yeah. Accepted on behalf of Leslie Koch, Mr. Kevin Fitzpatrick. I'm accepting on Leslie's behalf for a few reasons. One is I wrote the Governor's Island Explorer's Guide. But more importantly, I rode in a golf cart with Leslie that she drove around the islands. And I've ridden on the fair with her many times. Leslie has done many, many amazing things before she retired last July. And if you enjoy Governor's Island for its whimsical nature, a lot of it has to do with Leslie and the work she's done at the Trust for Governor's Island. And I would encourage you to visit the island because it opens early this year on May 1st. I'll be sure this gets in your hands. Thank you very much. Don't you love that the guy from the subway who works with the subway people, his name is Russian Off? <laughs> Everybody in the subway is Russian Off, is my experience. I, I love names. I have this. Um, my father's sister, her name was Gert. I, she weighed, and I'm not making this up. I don't make up anything. I tell, I tell it exactly the way it is in once. She weighed uh, 427 pounds. And she was four foot eleven. And this woman, I'm not making this up, I'm not kidding. Her last name was Zeppelin. <laughs> it's like rushing off. I love names. I love I, I love all of that stuff. I just uh, but anyway, back to the thing. But all that culture that was so exciting. 
<laughs> well, what, are you are you excited, or should we like bring the drinks in here? <laughs> okay, good. All right, because uh, listen, I'll just go get the bartender. We'll set it up right over there, and then we'll be fine. Um, now, our next award is for outstanding. It, it does make me laugh that even though I have this, I'm using this. I'm just <laughs> noticing. Our next award is for outstanding achievement in support of New York City, and it says in parentheses here, tourism. <laughs> now, when I met with Matthew Baker, I took him to lunch at Sardi's because um, my caricature was up at Sardi's, and I, I like everybody to see that. So, um, so I said to Matthew, well, let's, let's go to Sardi's. And so we, I don't smoke, but I said to him, let's, I did this when I was doing So anyway. I took him to Sardi's and was because I wanted to glean information from him that I could use during this event. And he said to me, because I said, now this is presented by tour guides, right? Big yelper. Yeah. And um, and he said, No, 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 no. A tour guide is a book. A tourist guide is a person. <laughs> Fuck you! I call them tour guides! <laughs> a Jew is a person, a Jewish person, shouldn't have been born in Iowa! It scarred me from the beginning! And I'm gonna use this even though this little thing is here. Our next award is for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Tourism. Our presenters are two high-profile members of GANIC, which after tonight they're going to change it to Gay Nice. We're just going to change it. She is the owner of Kristen's New York and a Brooklyn Experience. Brooklyn Experience. He is the head of Guides for New York City. Don't come up yet. I don't want them to know it's you. Okay. He is the head of guides for New York City vacation packages and UK connections, where they really care about those verbal distinctions I was talking about earlier. Please welcome Kristen Singleton Ferrari and Tony DeSante. <laughs> bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Gustave Flaubert said that travel makes you modest. You see what a tiny place you occupy in the world. And he said it in French. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How about Susan Sontag? I haven't been everywhere, but it's on my list. Or, it's better to travel well than to arrive. Well, who said that? Buddha. Oh, really? I kid you not. Hmm. Well, the point is that travel and tourism are always a good idea. Tourism is one of the top four biggest industries in New York and shows no sign of slowing down. Yeah. Good tourists keep themselves educated and keep us employed. <laughs> oh, the places you'll go. I know that one. It's Dr. Seuss. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Tonight's nominees have all worked hard for years to ensure that visitors to our city experience it at its best light. Whether you're a tourist in your own town or you've come from halfway around the world, you owe a debt of thanks to each of them for their dedication to showing New York's best face to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Support of New York City Tourism are the Central Park Conservancy, President and CEO, NYC and Company, Fred Dixon. Eldering Hill Incorporated. I was just there at the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Immigration Museum. Yeah. Luna Park, NYC. All right, 
Thanks, honey. The Gannon Capital Award goes to... Central Park Conservancy. <laughs> Accepting for Central Park Conservancy, Mr. David Cobb Gray. Conservancy runs a very rigorous training program for its guides to show the park's 27 million visitors each year uh, the best of its 843 acres. I'm very proud to have uh, uh, graduated from that training program and I'm also very proud to accept this award on the Conservancy's behalf. Thank you. So it doesn't matter that he's not wearing a tie. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 because in Central Park they dig around in the dirt and they play with the animals. And that, now I understand, and I'm glad you didn't wear a tie. It's black tie, what is it? Encouraged or something like that. It's, and anyway, for Central Park, I, you, you can go naked as far as I'm concerned. I love Central Park so much. Oh, is this the next one? Um, they gave me this script. I'm reading it on one of these um, pads. And um, so far, I think it's going very well. Um, okay, moving right along. Our next award is for Outstanding Achievement in Radio Slash Podcasts. In parenthesis, Audio Slash Spoken Word. <laughs> Who knew? And to present, we have the host of Outtakes Interviews, Outtakes Interviews on blogtalkradio.com. Please welcome Ms. Lori Baker. Lighting, makeup, wardrobe, these are just a few of the things you don't have to worry about when you work on radio. You know, the occasional sudden fit of coughing or unexpected clatter from nearby can be a hazard though, but hey, that's all part of the adventure. With internet radio, podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and other waves of the future, obstacles to the art of spoken word are being removed and anyone with a little talent and drive can give it a go. But you need a lot of talent and drive if you want to stay in the game. Three of the four shows nominated tonight have stayed in the radio and podcast game for years, and deservedly so. And the one newcomer shows every potential for longevity in this slippery but rewarding field. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Radio, Podcast, Audio, Spoken Word are The New Yorker Radio Hour, WNYC. There Goes the Neighborhood, WNYC. Inside New York Tourism, Joseph G. Moriello. Z Travel and Leisure, WBOX. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to... There Goes the Neighborhood. Accepting for There Goes the Neighborhood is Karen Jenkins, director of Moonlight, and he has me to deliver his speech. <laughs> and I don't have a tie because we're in public radio, we can't afford a tie. <laughs> we don't want to waste your money. Here's what I'll say, podcasting and, and shows like this are sort of being invented on the fly, and if anyone is doing it more creatively than Karen Frillman, I don't know who it is. You want to tell them how you do it? No, only that um, I don't want to tell it because it's impossible to edit Jim and tell him how to do anything. But thank you very much. WNYC is, I think, 93 years old this year. Um, it's a cultural institution that continues to reflect and um, really try to 
help New Yorkers understand the city that we live in, and I, I feel very honored to work there. I stumbled in in 1979, I grew up in New York, and this program really um, is an interesting history of New York. If you haven't listened to There Goes the Neighborhood, uh, it gives people a perspective over really 60, 70 years of how New York has changed and how the people in New York continue to make it vibrant and powerful and make it the great place that it is. So thank you so much for honoring us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what you could have done is you could have taken the schmata off of her shoulder and just tied it around her neck. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You didn't have to, but you could have. I know on radio, who cares? And podcasts. Podcasts. Doesn't that sound like something out of the Stepford Wives? Anyway, our next award is for Outstanding New York City Website. This show is so fucking high tech. <laughs> it's incredibly exciting. And by the way, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't it be sort of wonderful if I kicked over somebody's drink? Wouldn't it be sort of wonderful if the next time they put like the list, you don't have to do this, but I was just thinking it would be fun. When they put the list up on the screen, while the poor announcer is up there reading from a card, thinking that you know they're going to tell you who it is, as if we don't know who the nominees are because they're up there, just read them out loud with them. I, I mean, maybe we could get like a big choral number going, which is what I was thinking. We don't have to, but I was thinking it would be fun. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, our next award is, is for Outstanding New York City website nowadays. This gentleman is a criminal justice advocate. Boy, does he have his work cut out for him. <laughs> but as you may remember him as a contributing writer to Untapped Cities. Remember Untapped Cities? Yeah. Okay, so this is Tapped Cities. <laughs> and this is Untapped Cities. <laughs> and he was a contributing writer to Untapped Cities and the founding blogger at Janos NYC. Please welcome Mr. Janos Dev Martin. <laughs> Dressed magnificently, I might add. <laughs> to say the internet is everywhere these days is an understatement. We log on from work, from home. I see some of you are there right now. <laughs> there are websites uh, for news, for entertainment, for organizing our lives, and organizing campaigns. And, and by the way, I work on the campaign to close Rikers Island, which is one of the few places that guides don't go right now. But the hope is when we close it and turn into something great, you can bring our visitors there too. Um, when you search for New York online these days, you get 2.8 billion hits. And tonight, we are celebrating four websites that are being honored for their study and celebration of New York City. Uh, whether the focus is real estate, history, nostalgia, or culture, each website brings uh, the city into our lives on a daily basis and makes us feel a little bit more at home. So, is it up? <laughs> if you guys want, you can talk along with me. Uh, the nominees for Outstanding New York City website are Beautiful New York, Matthew Baker, editor. <laughs> Curb NY, Amy Clitt, editor. <laughs> Ephemeral New York, Esther Crane, editor. <laughs> and Edie Grieve, John L. Sasser, editor. <laughs> and the Gannick Apple Award goes to Ephemeral New York.
absolutely was not expecting this. Um, um, I want to thank especially the Guides Association for inviting me and holding this wonderful event. Um, I've actually started doing some tours and being a guide, and I just want you to know it is a lot harder than it looks. So <laughs> you all should, should give yourselves a big hand. Thank Yay! you. sort of praying to myself that Curbed New York is, is a, a, a website about dogs. <laughs> <laughs> if Ms. Plitt is here, will you, will you please take that into advisement? Because I have to walk on these sidewalks. It's hell. It's just hell. And guess what, kids? We are more than halfway done. <laughs> Can you believe this night is just flying by, isn't it? The Oscars take three and a half years and they still can't get it right. We are zipping it off. Up next, to present Outstanding Achievement. Oh, now this one is very important. No, 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 no. Sit up a little bit straighter. Stop yawning. Outstanding Achievement in food. <laughs> now you're interested. Now we care about this. Please welcome the founder of Scott's. Oh, this, oh, I love him. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. This man, this, this man is going to prove to you that not every wiener is a dick. Please welcome <laughs> Mr. Scott Wiener from Scott's Pizza. Wow, I was, I was waiting to see what joke would happen, and it wasn't the ones that I thought it would be. No, no, no. We're Anthony, I don't even know how to pronounce it. No, we're not going there. Pizza is what it's about. No relation. Scott, we, now wait a minute, are you Jewish? Yeah. And you have Scott's pizza? It's like not Scott's I know, dishes? I know there's a lot of confusion. <laughs> Please explain. I know there's a lot of confusion. We have extra time, we're zipping through it. Explain yourself. I know, I'm not Italian. I'm not obese, but I'm professionally obsessed with pizza. Yeah! And, and, and guiding tours has allowed me to do that, so my mind has been blown for the past nine years that this is a thing that can happen. And I'm exceptionally, exceptionally honored to be, uh, pr to be uh, announcing this award because, well, there's, a, there's something that happened last year at this event that I want to address. I heard a rumor that there was a vote by applause for which was the better iconic New York food, bagels or pizza. Oh. And I heard that pizza did not win. Oh. So, since I'm at the mic, we're gonna do a revote. This is legal. We'll talk to Matt Baker. So, if you think bagels are the more iconic New York food, please make some noise. And believe me, I, I like a good bagel. But if you think pizza is the more extreme, important New York iconic food, make noise, please! Wow! Well, look at that! A real recount. And now, and this one's official. Pizza it is. But, and, and you know, it's funny. I, I saw the list of nominees, and I looked over it, and I thought, there's, an, there's no pizza. <laughs> I mean, there's a glimmer of pizza on this list, but the thing that all the nominees have in common with pizza is they're all historically significant, they're all iconic, they're all important, and they're all probably places that you've either sent groups to or you've taken groups to. They're all very important. None of them have pizza. But I still am honored to announce the nominees for the Gannick Apple Award for Iconic New York Food. Uh, first off, for seeing it through to the bitter end, the Carnegie Deli. Yay! 
uh, for raising uh, or for making hospitality history. Give it up for Danny Meyer. Yeah. And of course, for existing for a hundred years, Nathan's famous. Please give it up. And last and certainly, but not least, for raising New York's cholesterol for 88 <laughs> years, Eisenberg Sandwich Shop. Yeah. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Nathan's Famous. Yeah. Now, this is apropos. Nathan's Famous could not make it, so. I, as a person who's professionally obsessed with pizza, with the last name Wiener, <laughs> humbly accept the award for Nathan's Famous. And I want to thank all of the buns out there. Thank you. Best. Best. Scott Wiener, wasn't he? This is so much fun. I'm having a ball. I have to tell you, I am. Um, a friend of mine took me to dine at Daniel. You know that? Yeah. Very expensive. Daniel, it's French. Très français. I swear to God, this really happened. We're sitting at the table, and because it's Daniel, Boulou. And I found out, in fact, that uh, Bou is pronounced differently than you. Because Bou is O-U, which is O. And L-U-D is U. So it's boo <laughs> And we're at Daniel, and a dish comes out, and I asked the waiter, who had a very thick French accent, may I please have some pepper? <laughs> about 40 minutes later, he came back, and he put a writing pad in front of me. He said, what's this? He said, but that is your pepper, monsieur. <laughs> My friend and I stayed, because this is the way we get back at New York City Chefs. We stayed till they close. We didn't leave. We stayed. We stayed. We stayed. Bring us another. Bring us another one. All night long, finally, place is closing down. I see the guy, the waiter, the French waiter, outside smoking a cigarette with his friend, and I swear to God, this is what he said. So you know, like, I couldn't believe that this fucking guy was asking for pepper when we got a chef that looks like this. <laughs> New York City dining, you know what? Trust me, stick with the hot dogs. Stick with the pizza. I, I love, I love what Mike Dillinger said. He said, um, what about pizza bagels? <laughs> right over your head. Okay, doesn't matter. It's fine. We only have three, we only have four more. It's fine. We're, we're getting along here. Um, presenting the award for Outstanding Achievement in Photography. He is noted sartorialist about town, working at Alan Flusser Custom whose musings and videos can be found on his website, The Whole Cloth. Please welcome Mr. Andrew Yamato. And here he is. Hello, everyone. I have no business being on this stage whatsoever. I am not a tour guide. I'm not a photographer. I represent no institution or organization. I know Matt. <laughs> Most of you know that. We have, we have both have daughters, same names, different spellings. Um, all right, let's see. But you're wearing a bow tie. I am wearing a bow tie. Well, you know, I accept encouragement, you know. <laughs> all right. So, New York is a city of images. Black and white, color, abstract or realistic. The visual depictions of the city are New York for the many visitors who come to see the real life version of what they've seen in print or on the internet. This year, we lost one of New York's greatest photographers, the legendary Bill Cunningham. Mm -hmm. He said, the best fashion show is definitely on the street, and indeed it is. 
That street has been an inspiration for so many photographic images, including the four that are nominated, nominated tonight. Three different boroughs are depicted by three different artists in four unique, beautifully composed images. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Photography are for Bronx Casitas Five, Casitas Five, Nathan Kensinger. <laughs> for Coney Island Ten, Paul Kessel. <laughs> for Manhattan Bridge, Michael, Mike McLaughlin. <laughs> and for Port Morris Three, Nathan Kensinger. <laughs> no and the Gannick Apple Award goes to Paul Kessel. people as well. <laughs> I just want you to know that I'm overcoming my own kind of fear up here. I feel good about the way it's going. One, two, three, four. This is good. Okay. You know what I'm a little disappointed in? I mean, can I be honest? We've been, we've now been through many awards together here tonight. It bothers me that when a name is said, even if you don't know them, and even if like you're the competition, <laughs> can't you just applaud long enough to get them to the goddamn <laughs> microphone? I mean, what, are your hands tired? This is like playing the Hebrew book for the aged. What's wrong with you people? Just applaud until they get, I mean, I'm not insisting, but it would be nice. I mean, pork man, you know, just please. We already gave up on the tithe. Can't we have something here? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice President of the Guides Association of New York City, Ms. Nina Mendez! Spirit Award exists to celebrate a guide who has been a mentor, a cheerleader, a teacher, and a friend to his or her colleagues and to the profession at Yale Arch. Uh, he has written and published books and articles that other guides have studied and learned from. He spent 20 years fighting for our city's history at the Landmarks Preservation Commission. And along with others, I, as 
as chair of the Gannick Education Committee, personally benefited from his genius in leading FAM tours and professional development programs and being a guest speaker for our organization. And these, these wonderful programs have included studies of 42nd Street from east to west, the advent and rise of the World Trade Center, the art of office lobbies, including the Woolworth Building, mm. <laughs> urban genealogy, and Grand Central Terminal. The name of this brilliant historian and quintessential New Yorker is Anthony W. Robbins. <laughs> Two years later, Tony Robbins finished graduate school and became co-chairman of walking tours for an organization called Friends of Cast Iron Architecture. Um, and a legend was born. He has led tours for the Municipal Arts Society, the 92nd Street Y, the Organization of American F Historians, the Academy of American Poets, and the 1992 Democratic National Convention, just to name a few. And uh, on top of that, Tony looks more dashing in a wide brimmed fedora hat than either uh, Humphrey Bogart or Harrison Ford ever dreamed of. <laughs> Tony is also a co-founder and past president of the Art Deco Society of New York, for which he created the tour program in 1981, and which he continues to guide sold out tours to this day. Gannick Apple Award winner Christopher Gray of the New York Times has said of Anthony's history writing, it's difficult to find anything as accomplished. But never mind what other people say about Tony, let's have a look at the master guide himself. Let's see his own words and his relationship with the city.
what happens. I, I, I even have to I forget it. I uh, just want to say this is such a wonderful honor uh, because it comes from my peers, my fellow guides. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say um, other than thank you. Um, and to say that GANIC is a remarkable organization. Uh, the, uh, a former president of the Municipal Arts Society once said to me that when they were, MAS was getting its guide program together that they were going to organize uh, walking tours and then they discovered that walking tour guides can't be organized <laughs> because they're difficult, irascible personalities. They know what they're going to do. They don't want to hear it from you. And that's just the way it is. Um, and he was absolutely right. Um, so then it's remarkable, really, that here is Gannick, uh, organized entirely by volunteers, every last one of them a guide. And look what they've done. It's 43 years old. They get stuff done. They're reasonably organized. I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to push it here. Um, but they, they have insurance. You know, you don't think about these things if you're not a guide. Liability insurance. Um, they have, um, they send delegates to international guide conventions. Uh, but really what they mostly do, and it's Nina Mendy, who you were just listening to, who really is in charge of it right now, they do these remarkable educational programs. Uh, guides lean on each other in this organization. They prop each other up, and it's, and it's, a, beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, and I think that's all I really want to say, except that uh, two things, I guess, to uh, Gannick, Thank you for this honor, um, and thank you for doing all that you do for New York. And to those of you who aren't guides, go take a tour with some of the most interesting people you're likely to meet and learn something new about this remarkable city. Thank you. So fantastic. I mean, can you imagine the confidence it takes to put the Empire State Building on your wedding invitation? <laughs> My dad had a picture of a shack from Minsk. <laughs> Okay. I'm a cabaret entertainer. This is all we do. Cold porter songs and dick jokes. This is my life. <laughs> anyway, and sometimes I do uh, music by Richard Rogers, so it's dick songs and dick jokes. It's like... <laughs> anyway, next, we want to recognize. Oh, this is Miss, Miss not written very well, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> Next, uh, somebody we want to recognize is, no, something we want to recognize is outstanding achievement in New York City book writing. And I'm talking about fiction in this particular case. She is the author of the YA novel. What's YA? Young adult. Young adult. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's been so long since I've met any. Um, she's the author of the young adult novel set in New York City, The Girl Who Could See. Please welcome Ms. Carrie Morris. bookstores. Of those, some even turn out to be pretty great. But the amazing thing about fiction is that it often touches on a deeper truth, a greater truth, than any work of nonfiction documentary writing ever can. While the great journalists give us the facts and figures of a time and a place, novelists give us a peek inside the human heads and hearts of the characters we learn to know and love. Whether it's a work 
of poetry, mystery, character study, or dishy gossip, the greatest New York City novels all have one thing in common, and this is surely true of the four nominated tonight, the city is a character in the story, just as much as any of the people who live in it. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Book Writing are The Dollhouse by Fiona Davis. Murder in Morningside Heights by Victoria Thompson. The Swans of Fifth Avenue by Melanie Benjamin. And Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to Victoria Thompson. And I heard Victoria is not here this evening, could not be with us, so Gannick will accept this award on her behalf. Congratulations, Victoria. Recognize outstanding achievement in New York City book writing nonfiction. <laughs> you guys are big readers, I see. Okay, please welcome the author of Scandalous Women The Lives and Loves of History's Most Notorious Women, Ms. Elizabeth Carey Mahone. into any bookstore, into the New York local section, what do you see? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> History, architecture, pop culture, movies, food, politics, the neighborhoods, you name it. This inexhaustible city continues to inspire scholars and students to look beneath its surface and share their findings in print. Go virtually anywhere else in the U.S. and you'll quickly say, I've already read a book about this city. <laughs> Maybe two. The Gotham keeps on giving and the hunger for knowledge and understanding of what makes this city and its people tick never dies. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Book Writing Nonfiction are the Bowery Boys, Adventures in Old New York, by Tom Myers and Greg Young. Food in the City, New York's professional chefs, restaurateurs, line cooks, street vendors, and purveyors talk about what they do and why they do it, by Ina Yelov. Governor's Island Explorer's Guide, by Kevin Fitzpatrick. Storefront 2, A History Preserved, The Disappearing Face of New York, by James and Carla Murray. <laughs> and the Gannett Apple Award goes to... two weeks or so into a microphone, you talk to people every day. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you look at them in the eyes and you bring the stories that we try to tell as well, but you bring your own stories to life in real time. And that is, I think, what this is all about. And um, you really bring the, 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 the spirit of the city to life. I don't know, I'm blonde, I'm gone. Um, um, oh wait, we wanted, I, I was supposed to thank um, the people responsible for the book. They include our editor, um, Casey, our publicist, uh, Courtney, and our lovely guy who got us uh, the book in the first place, the publisher, Keith, and also our um, book designer, Tomai Kebu, who also designed our logo and Greg's logo for his yeah. spin-off show, The First. Um, I just, I wanted to say that um, it was almost two years ago to the day that we just, we got the contract for this. Um, during the course of writing, we almost killed each other. Um, I lost hair, I got some bad acid reflux, and I can't see anymore. You already have that. Yeah, yeah I can't really see anymore, but I would do it all again. The, the experience of just going through every single neighborhood of Manhattan was one of the greatest pleasures of my life. It was a wonderful book to produce with Tom. I'm really, really, we were so grateful that you liked it. Uh, because, you know, you guys are reading it closer than probably anyone else. So this is a wonderful honor. And by the way, the other books in this category are tremendous. Everyone could go get all four of these books. And by the way, not to like do any log rolling, um, but uh, Kevin, who wrote The Governor's Island Guide, is in our new show on Algonquin <laughs> Roundtable. And have him sit at the round table with him, and you will remember for the rest of your life. So thank you all for this honor. Yay! Cute. I just want to breastfeed them both. It's just it's horrible. I loved when he said he had bad acid reflux. I was thinking, because I see, I live, um, you're guide, so you'll understand this. I live in Riverdale, where, yeah, where the Hebrew home for the aged is. I always say I'm going to planning ahead. I'm just, when the time is right, I'll just crawl there on my lips. I, um, but people will all often say to you, say, say things to me like, doesn't it bother you that you're a cabaret performer? I mean, wouldn't that be, wouldn't, wouldn't you rather do something a little more hip? Yeah. <laughs> people say this to me, Steve, I swear to God. And I say to them, you know, I live in Riverdale. I'm not so much hip as hip replacement. <laughs> and so thanks to, thanks to that, Recipient, I'm now going to also say, and I'm not so much badass as bad acid reflux. Uh, it just came to me. Okay, maybe it's not so good. I'll try it out on you. Um, anyway, we now have the award for Outstanding Achievement in Essay, Article, and Series Writing. Now, she is the editor at large and travel writer for National Geographic. He has served as critic and editor for Backstage Newspaper that gives the Backstage Awards, the Bistro Awards, that Shana Farr won, that I won, that Steve Ross won, that Martha Sanders, it's a big deal backstage. <laughs> and he is, he's one of their critics. And the, he's the, edit, the current editor of the critics, no less. God, he's going to lambaste me after he sees this thing tonight. <laughs> but he is the founder of the Critics' Choice Tours. Please welcome. Well, she actually couldn't be here tonight, but who needs her? He's a critic. Please welcome <laughs> David Sheward! but uh, journalism. It gives you the chance to travel, explore, and get paid for it, sort of, and uh, writing about what you see, hear, and taste. It also gives you the chance to be called the lying, dishonest media by Oompa Loompas in high odds. <laughs> Enemy of the people. Um, 
I, I write about the most intrinsic of New York institutions, the theater, and it gives me the chance to enter other worlds entirely, whether I am in the troubled mind of Hamlet, tilting windmills with Don Quixote, or just uh, being alive with the cast of company. I emerge from every show different from when I went in, and a lot poorer. Um, the four nominees tonight have all explored the culture of the city in the hopes of finding a new way to look at it, a new understanding for it, and a new love, and a new love uh, for it to inspire their readers. Like those who have come before them and those who will come after, they find New York an inspiration for their curiosity, their scholarship, and their hard work. The nominees for Outstanding Achievement in Essay, Article, Series Writing are... Well, I'll go ahead. Um, for Camera Obscura, Curb New York, Nathan Kensinger. Oh, there it is. Uh, for even in New York, nature's all around us if we want to see it. Edible Brooklyn, Ariel Lauren Wilson. <laughs> for his contribu contributions to The New Yorker, um, Ian Frazier. I was trying to be Montague. You know, for wa a walking tour of 1866 New York in the footsteps of 150-year-old guidebooks, Curb New York, James Nebius. And the Gannick Apple Award goes to James Nevius for uh, the Walking Tour of 1866 New York and the first time of the year. I have been informed that Mr. Nevius cannot be with us. So just like Tony Danza on that Emmy Award show where he accepted all the Emmys a couple of years award ago, I will accept this on his behalf. <laughs> but Tony Danza tap dancer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yay! Enjoy the evening. Fantastic. Fantastic. I don't even care that you're not in backstage anymore. You are delightful. That was so much fun. Are you, am I the only one here having a blast? I think this is a ball. Are you having a ball? I can really, really. I'm just loving this. So, so you're really not having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you should have gone, oh, not yet. No, instead you sat there and went. <laughs> but if you're not having the time of your life here at this awards ceremony, there's something wrong with you. But if it's possible that that's the case, you can have the time of your life at the after party <laughs> which is going to happen at Jake's. I don't want to say this on mic because I'm not inviting everybody. <laughs> but at Jake's, which is around the corner between 22nd and 23rd on, on 9th Avenue. So I hope I'll see most of you at Jake's after we finish here tonight for the after party. <laughs> <laughs> myself with that dance, ain't I? Well, I have to date somebody. Anyway, uh, he led the Guides Association of New York City, otherwise known as GAMIC, bid committee. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't like the results of what happened here tonight, if you wish somebody else had won, and you're sitting there seething because your person didn't win. First of all, there are no winners here. There are only recipients of the Apple Award. But if you would have preferred to have a recipient other than the recipient that came up, God, it's, it's so hard to be gay and say words like recipient. Like, but if you would have preferred someone else, don't gripe, don't moan. Volunteer for Gannick, <laughs> and you get to pick who wins. 
Next year, all of you could choose the winners to go. Oh, she's yawning. Okay, I'll, I, it's, I, it's just, I know you don't think I, you, you just don't think that I can see you because you're used to watching television, but we can actually see you when you go. <laughs> He did. He led the Gannick bid committee to Iran. <gasps> did you hear about this? What happened? <laughs> did, did you hear? Did, <laughs> did you hear what happened in Iran? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Four fucking votes. Do you know about this? Do you know what happened? <laughs> this is the World Federation of Tour Guides. They wanted to have it in New York City. They went to Iran to uh, bid for it, and they did this fantastic presentation. I mean, it was just stunning, stellar. They were loving it. I mean, you have never seen girls selling big apples in birkas like this. It was spectacular. They lost the bid by four votes. Okay, not New York City. Where did they choose instead? Georgia. Tripleasy! <laughs> Trip fucking bleasy! Because it has castles. We have white castles. Because it was the day, the reason they lost by four votes, because it was the day that our new esteemed president announced his travel ban. In Iran, they took the vote. <laughs> Timing is everything, trust me. Get out of show business. That's, that's the moral of that story. But they lost by four votes. It's such a nightmare. Tbilisi? Georgia? You want Georgia? Go to Atlanta. Tbilisi? <laughs> anyway, he led the Gannick Bid Committee to Iran in their efforts to host the next convention of the World Federation of Tourist Guide Association, and he is the chairman of the Multilingual Guides Committee. Please welcome Mr. Abrahim Adiano! Keep clapping! He took the fucking pictures! Clap for him! Jesus, did I fuck that up? Give me this back. I'm sorry, this is a really serious part too, so just pretend I was serious. <laughs> we all know and we all remember that 2016 was a difficult year for many of us. In the world of politics, entertainment, literature, academics, and so many other fields, our hearts were broken with many losses. The new shows and news feed near the end of last year were filled with comments on how they wanted the year to come to an end. So when we say goodbye to our favorite New York people and places, to those wonderful and inspiring institutions and personalities that we lost last year, we already know that there are going to be many of them. New York was not spared last year. And some of us are still nursing broken hearts from those who we love who are no longer with us. So as we say goodbye one last time, we would like you to show the same amount of love to everyone who departed, whether they were major celebrity or just colleagues to some of us. So please hold your applause to the end of the in memoriam.
I'm sorry, I was so lighthearted going into that because that was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. I'm devastated to find out that the Troll Museum is gone. <laughs> I mean, where are they going to put the Dick Cheney Memorial Presidential Library? Is this, a, am I like gonna give an award now? Is this like, do I give the envelope now? I don't wanna make that kind of mistake again. Matthew? Yes. Is this like, is this an award person now? Yes. Okay. Cause that was, that was serious. That was a big bad mistake. That was like, I, felt, I now know what it feels like to be Warren Beatty. And may I say that this is the first time in my life I've ever been able to say that? Although my sister thinks she's 8,000 years old too. But she looks it. But anyway, um, she is the vice president of education and evaluation at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. He is the founder and curator of the Museum of the American Gangster. <laughs> Stick them up, baby. <laughs> Please welcome Linda Kennedy and Lorcan Antwe. writers, I've been making notes on this up to the last moment, so I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> I love museums. Today, when so much of the world is falling to the Wreckers Ball, and many of us, uh, and many, I should say, none of us, many people, overuse the word random, displaying artifacts within their context and within the context of our various institutions. Uh, this mission is more important than ever. And to make a living in the field, to specialize in a certain piece of history or art or culture, and to be able to say, that's how I feed my family, is a real privilege and an honor. You feed your family? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to adopt two more? <laughs> Seriously. Um, even though my museum places historical concept, uh, context, uh, for a group of people who live in a world of secrecy and use horrific violence and intimidation to take what they want. Congress? Uh, no, gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, <Election>. my, <laughs> my museum does actually commemorate incredibly brave men and women who put their lives on the line every day for the safety and progress of their fellows. Tour guns? No, but I like the way you <laughs> The nominations for Outstanding Achievement in New York City Museum ex Exhibitions are... For America to Zanzibar, Muslim Culture Near and Far, the Children's Museum of Manhattan. <laughs> for Hidden in Plain Sight, Portraits of Hunger in New York City, the Brooklyn Historical Society. <laughs> For Jacob A. Reese, Revealing New York's Other Half, the Museum of the City of New York. And the winner is... Oh, wait, wait you got one more. more. Oh. Don't, don't you, you leave this, this one out! out. <laughs> oh, oh, yes! Another page. Slide it again. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my mother would kill me for this. <laughs> the Yiddish Theater, from Bowery to Broadway. She's, by the way, the first cousin of Manny uh, Goldberg, uh, who grew up to be Edward G. Robinson. Wow. Uh, the Museum of the City of New York. Yeah. And I say the Gannick Apple Award goes to <laughs> Jacob A. Reese. Yeah. I was the curator of prints and photographs of the museum. 
1987 to 91 when I first started working on Jacob Reese's photograph. So it's been a journey. And uh, so thank you so much for this award. It's been a privilege to work on such a great New Yorker. Um, and he's also a Danish immigrant, and the show right now is in his hometown of Riva in Denmark. Huh. So, wow. Really and I have to say, I didn't know very much about this organization, and I've had a great time and learned a lot and have like a reading list and all sorts of things, and I've, you've been really fun. Thank you Aren't so you much. Nice. <laughs> I love that. Now that's a speech. <laughs> I will next be appearing, in case you're wondering, at the Museum of the City of New York. <laughs> doing the Jacob Rees songbook. It's a very short show, but I'll be doing it. I don't need to read this. We're going to give... Um, our final award of the evening uh, for lifetime achievement to somebody. Um, when I first came to New York City that first week when I told you about, I was here for a week before I moved here. During that week, I, um, at that time, I was going to school in Michigan. I was in high school, I went to high school in Michigan. And, um, the school did this off-campus senior trip, and we, we went to New York for a week. My dream come true. I used to, when I was growing up in Iowa, I used to climb to the top of my yellow swing set when I was a little kid, hoping that I could see the Empire State Building from Iowa. I was very flat. I thought it was possible. Awesome. <laughs> I always wanted to be in New York. Uh, from the moment I came out of the womb, I, 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 I came out of the womb, I said to the doctor, I am, I'm, I'm where? <laughs> Don't bother to slap me, I'm awake. <laughs> I always wanted to be in New York, and that first week, I, I, I was in New York, and we were going to all these shows, and we went to a place called Ted Hook's Backstage. Do you remember it? You see, you see how it goes? I mean, 25 years from now, somebody's going to say the Troll Museum and nobody will fly. <laughs> Once it closes. But there was this fabulous place called Ted Hook's Backstage, and there was a man at the piano. And he, and I was there with a bunch of kids from my class, and he said, well, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Iowa. And he said, and he started playing something from the Music Man. Oh, there's nothing funny about the Iowa way to treat you when you treat you. I said, but I go to school in Michigan. And he started, how I wish and wish again. Wish I would. I thought, this man knows a song. If I were, no matter where I'm from, this man knows this song. I was so stunned that this was a possibility. And then like 10 years later, I was living in New York and my partner for my birthday took me to the Algonquin, uh, to the Oak Room at the Algonquin. I didn't know that I would eventually be playing there. I mean, this was like, wow, the Algonquin, the Oak Room, and we went. And this man was playing that night and he found out it was my birthday and he sent a bottle of champagne to our table. He didn't know me. I hadn't fucked him. I mean, this was... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I then, I'm playing in a dive. I'm playing in a dive on 59th Street on the east side. He came to hear me. It was like my idol coming to hear me. Since then, it's been some decades. And... If I want a song and he knows it, he gives it to me. He is the most generous, kindest, most wonderful part of New York. The best that New York is. I have never heard this man say a mean word about another person. Not one mean word about another. Do you know how hard that is? I couldn't do it. And I'll tell you what. To give this award, this Lifetime Achievement Award to him, 
There is no one who is more fitting, and I'll tell you why. She is one of New York City's top cabaret singers, and she is one of New York City's top tour guides. She was, I think, the second woman ever to win Manhattan Association of Cabaret Awards uh, for female vocalist. Um, she has won countless awards. She has a new act uh, that she's been doing called Follow Me at the Lori Beachman Theater. It's sensational. She's going to be doing it again in October. Please go. If you ever hear that this woman is singing, you must go treat yourselves. You'll be so glad you did. And also, she is my go-to guide. When I have friends in the city and I want to show them a really special time, I hire her to take us around and show us different parts of New York. And my friends are always amazed. They're always thrilled. There is no one better on the cabaret stage or as a tour guide than the great Marta Sanders. <laughs> And this is Marta Sanders! Woo! Hi, everybody. What a fun night, huh? It's great. So, I have the honor tonight of giving this award to the man that we didn't say his name, but I'll say his name, but I'm not bringing him up yet. Mr. Steve Ross. Yay! When I was asked by Matt to give this award, I said, what is it? that Gannick thinks equates to the Lifetime Achievement Award. And he said, first, it recognizes someone who is unique to New York City. From Prohibition to World War II, New York City was the capital of cabaret and glamorous nightlife. Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland, Lena Horne. After the Stonewall Riots in 1969, the gay community revived the nightlife scene. I met Steve Ross in the early 70s. We were both performing at cabaret rooms here in New York City. Steve Ross became known as the crown prince of cabaret with his princely reputation of presenting material from the great American songbook, Tin Pan Alley, The Brill Building, Irving Berlin, Jerome Kern, Harold Arlen, George and Ira Gershwin, and of course, Cole Porter, who was a resident of the Waldorf Towers for 23 years, and he composed on his piano that he named High Society, Songs and musicals like Anything Goes, I Get a Kick Out of You, and You're the Top, You're a Waldorf Salad, to name a few. <laughs> With his material, Steve Ross rose to fame after he held long residences at the Oak Room, the Algonquin, and Ted Hook's backstage. He went on to sing and play his beloved American repertoire at smart clubs, and swank parties in the most glamorous hotels around the world, like the Ritz in London, the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, and he was the first American artist to perform <laughs> at the Ritz in Paris. A multi-MAC award winner by the Manhattan Association of Cabarets and other prestigious awards, Steve has hosted and performed a live cabaret series on BBC TV, and NPR radio. Eight years of concerts and lectures about this music at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Mr. Ross has performed off-Broadway in his own tribute to Fred Astaire called I Won't Dance, and on Broadway with Frank Langella and Noel Coward's Present Laughter. Steve performed at the keyboards and played the role of the Cockney Valet. Lifetime achievement also recognizes commitment to community. So I went to the leader of the cabaret community, K.T. Sullivan, who besides being a cabaret star, 
She now runs the Mabel Mercer Foundation. This is the organization that produces cabaret concerts and conventions nationally and internationally. When I asked her what she thought were the qualities that made Steve Ross the best person to receive this award, she said, and I quote, the first time I was taken to the Oak Room of the Algonquin, it was to see Steve Ross in a Cole Porter show. Being from Boggy Depot, Oklahoma, I think I pronounced that right, B-O-G-G-Y. I kept thinking it should be boogie, but uh, same thing, I'm sure. I felt I'd stepped into a movie, a movie set in a more genteel and sophisticated New York. It was the 80s, but I felt I was on a magic carpet ride to the mid-30s, with Mr. Ross and his white tie and tails spouting bon mot and tinkling the ivories with classic melodies. Salute l'artiste, salute Steve Ross. It is my honor to present the 2017 Gannick Apple Award for Lifetime Achievement to my friend, Mr. Steve Ross. very illuminating evening and you know I have I wasn't born in New York City I was born in New Rochelle as a matter of fact 45 minutes <laughs> and um but I actually first came here how do I put this 70 years ago <laughs> my mother thought it was time that I uh, got serious about the piano when she found a graduate student at Juilliard which was then of course as you tour guides know uptown and there I went. And so I saw New York in the, in the 40s. And I got a big taste of it. My own tour guides were my aunts who took me to Rockefeller Center for the first time. And I can remember, I was just thinking tonight as I came down the various high points of my early life, seeing the city and enjoying it so very much. I had a great memory of my grandmother taking me to to watch Doug, General Douglas MacArthur had just been let go, Harry Truman, and he was driving out of the uh, Waldorf Towers in his car. I don't know for some reason we went there, and of all these places that I've been, I've been working in New York for 47 years, and uh, someone said when I first came here, well look, you might be broke, but you will never be bored. And this is absolutely what I have found to be the case. I have, never, I have been broke, but I have never been bored, for instance. And since I have a, a pathologically low level of boredom, that's really quite something to think about. Uh, so the, uh, what I'm trying to say is that I have enjoyed making music, helping the soundtrack be help of these great songs that we've had from the Transatlantic Songbook. And I, they really are the soundtrack of New York. And, most recently, we of course, we think of Rhapsody in Blue, the Gershwin from um, Woody Allen's wonderful, wonderful um, song, um, show Manhattan. Speaking of Woody Allen, I had a, a bunch of little sayings I was going to say, but I did read one. <laughs> I'm allowed to say this, I hope, Mark. Um, Woody Allen said, the last time I was in a woman, it was the Statue of Liberty. So <laughs> that's the last time you're going to hear that. Um, <laughs> But I'm honored that, that I have had the chance to work all these years and sing all of these songs in this city that I love. I worked on the west side, I worked on the east side, and downtown and uptown, and I hope to continue to do it as long as I am upright <laughs> and the vocal cords work and the fingers work, because I love this city. It's, um, as I said, never bored me for an instant. I found loves here, I found jobs here, and I have I hope found a bit of a future. To end my, my little remarks here, I thought the best thing to do would be to sing you a song that I think should be the, um, uh, the song for your wonderful organization. M 
Matt and Mike who were so kind to think about me. This is a song, see what you think. <clears throat> this is New York, so color it nicely. Don't look too closely or too precisely. Never forget it will only take a few pastels to cover each mistake. <laughs> this is the west side, color it brightly. This is the east side, color it lightly. Make every brownstone a fading brown that you can erase when the brownstone tumbles down. <laughs> color Park Avenue silver and gold. Make 57th bright. Use all the colors in your coloring book. On Broadway glitters at night. This is a sunset, color it glowing. This is a river, color it flowing. There's a skyline, here's a child. This is a town on which a rainbow smiled. Color the plaza in crimson and wine. Cover the park in snow. Make all the carriages a stately black and make Fifth Avenue glow. And when you're finished, it will look pretty. Isn't New York a colorful city? But if you lack a coloring book, just go outside, open your eyes, open your eyes and look. Thank you. Yay! Steve Ross! Steve Ross! Steve Ross! While you're clapping for people, will you please clap for the men and women who did the sound, lights, and AV tonight? Thank you for such a great job. Will you please clap for Matthew Baker, who directed this extravaganza? Will you please clap loudly and hard for Amada Anderson and Adrian Cooper, who produced this extravaganza? My name is Mark Nadler. It's been an honor to be with you tonight. Let's go party at Jake's. Good night, everybody.